Welcome to A Productive Conversation. It's me, Mike Vardy, joining you uh, for an episode that is coming to you from the vault. And this one is a a unique episode in that the guest is no longer with us. Um, I am honored to have uh, said that Craig Kulik was a friend of mine. And uh, I am actually, as this episode is being aired at the World Domination Summit, the final one, uh, a a conference, an event that was kind of put together by Chris Gillibo uh, and his team. Chris has also been on the show in the past before. Craig and I were supposed to go to this together. And we were supposed to go uh, just before, um, you know, the the pandemic cancelled the last one. And um, going to this event is kind of like my last uh, kind of it's an act of closure for me to a degree. Um, it's been, you know, I guess almost three years in the making, I guess at this point, maybe closer to two years, probably two years. But, uh, Craig and I talk about like morning routines and things like that. This is a really good conversation that, you know, um, I wanted to bring back up, especially at this time, because, uh, Craig was a great guy and his message deserves to be heard to this day. So, I wanted to bring this to your attention and the best way for me to do that and to honor Craig other than, you know, doing what we were supposed to do together this week is also to share this episode with you. So without further ado, here's my conversation with Craig Kulik. Enjoy. I'd like to welcome Craig Kulik to the Productivityist podcast. Craig, thanks for joining me today. Happy to be here, Mike. So we, uh, whenever I start off an episode, if you've not listened before, I kind of go over how we met, if I've met the guest in person before, and we met at the World Domination Summit. Go figure. I've met, I've, I've met and met a lot of people at that, uh, at that conference, having gone, you know, seven years running. And uh, it was great to, like, w- when we first came across each other, it was in, was it in, it was in my, my academy session, I think, right? Yeah, I believe it was first thing in the morning. I got there early and you were hanging around talking to some of your friends and I just connected into the circle and we started we started chatting. And uh, we, I'm not going to push this too hard because uh, we actually talked about this before the breakout. Uh, you did a really excellent job of kind of distilling um, what you can learn from me about productivity. So if you've not read any of my stuff before or you want to know more about time crafting and uh, you, you want to get it in a a estimated reading time of 10 minutes. I'll put a link in the show notes as to how you could do that. Uh, Cause Craig has basically shared what you can learn about me, uh, learn from me rather about productivity, but I want to talk about um, how you can create good mornings. And, and for me, I think the biggest thing, uh, and we're going to dive into rituals and all that stuff. But for me, when I see this, when I see good mornings, my, my back goes up a little bit initially. Now, you and I have had a chance to chat before, but my back goes up because whenever I see that, it's, it's, it, I'm thinking, oh, no, this person is going to be telling me I have to get up at 5 a.m. And, you know, I have to write in the morning even though I'm not good. So I, I, I tend to dismiss it out of hand or I used to tend to dismiss, dismiss it out of hand. But can you tell, um, you know, my audience here what, what Create Good Mornings is about? Because it's not about that right out of the gate. Absolutely. I think that is one of <clears throat> the most common myths about mornings is people seem to think that, <clears throat> excuse me, people seem to think that this means waking up early and going through some step-by-step process that is going to make you happy and more cheery. And that's not at all what this is about. It's about starting your day in a way that makes the most sense for you, um, in a way that you are being aware and intentional about what you're doing and why you're doing it. And that can help you to get to a place in the future that you want to get to. It might give you enjoyment in the day that you're having during that day. And so a lot of what I talk about is that creating good mornings is about customizing your morning to what makes sense for you in terms of your lifestyle, how much time you have, what your goals are, what your life stage is, like if you have kids or if you don't have kids, if you work from home, if you don't work from home. There's so many different factors that play into this. But it's really about what does the first few hours of your day look like? What can you do differently? How can you uh, shift or adapt that over time? And just continuing to come back and being reflective about that time. Because what I've discovered is that as someone who is like you, I am not naturally a morning person. And I 
fell into this because I was looking for a way to develop better habits. And what I've discovered is that I am so much more productive and creative and focused in my work in the morning, but also throughout the day. It's, it's acted as a bit of a training period for me to develop positive habits and effective habits in the morning that have then translated to other parts of my day. Let's talk about let's talk about the 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 power of routines and especially morning routines because we I've talked about this before how evening routines uh, are kind of my my jam initially is like how how evening routines shape my day for the next day because frankly I suck at mornings and to be able to go into the next day with this idea of a daily theme so that I've I've got some intention to move forward with and then I've got a way to pay attention to things. How do how do routines? You talked about how they help you know kind of shape you in, in a way. What when when did you kind of discover that you needed to put routines in place, and where where should someone start? Do you think when it comes to building a routine so they can start to you know move their day forward with you know? And you put this you put this uh, pretty eloquently on your start here page on your site. You know, you basically say uh, you know. Um, Good, the, good, the create good mornings definition is is that you aim for intentional, effective, satisfying, and calm. So let's dive into that a little bit. Yeah, absolutely. Well, let's talk a little bit about the power of rituals and routines. Mm-hmm. And I'll connect this to a, a bit of a funny anecdote about why routines are important to me and why I think they're important to a lot of people. So a few months ago, my partner decided to bake some cookies. He was going to take them to work and give them to his colleagues. And we don't normally have cookies in the house because that doesn't work well for me. I love cookies and will eat them at every chance that I can get. So he bakes these delicious cookies and the first bite that I took out of it was incredible. It was these were chocolate chip Reese's Pieces cookies. Uh, Of course, homemade, that soft, chewy moistness. And I just devoured the cookie and ate a second cookie and a third cookie. I think I stopped at six or maybe seven. And that was because I knew that Joel was taking these cookies to work the next day. So the next morning, he takes all the cookies except for two and leaves them for me on a tray. I ate those cookies by 9 a.m. And I looked over on the stove and I saw that there was a baking tray there. And on top of the baking tray were these burnt cookies that didn't make it. I looked at them and thought, huh, those don't look like they're that bad. So I picked up a burnt cookie and I took a bite into it, uh, and it was disgusting. It was terrible. It was burnt. Uh, and I thought, what was I thinking? Why did I do that? But then I had this other idea. What if I use my front teeth and like gnaw off the tops of the cookies? Then I can do- enjoy the cookie tops. And so I did, and they were delicious. And I texted Joel and said, I can't stop myself. I just ate all the cookie tops and texted a photo of the cookie tops. So this is an example of not being very intentional about what I was doing, which I will sometimes let myself do. But I think this is something that we can all connect to because we can all be impulsive with maybe waking up and checking our phone or checking email or going on social media. And that becomes our mode, that becomes our our habits. So for me, uh, building up some constraints or barriers around what I allow myself to do in the mornings and other parts of the day through rituals and routines has been really effective, except I don't live by the motto that you need to do this all the time. I think once in a while you want to let yourself go and eat a bunch of cookies in the morning. So let's, let's talk a little bit about this idea of, of, you know, like the routines for me, they book, they bookend the day. Do you have an evening routine, by the way? You must. Yes, absolutely. And I love how you talk about this, that, the morning and the evening routines are, are bookends. I completely agree. For me, my evening routine is really short. It's like five or 10 minutes because when I was starting to build habits in 2012, the first ones that I wanted to build were physiotherapy for an ultimate Frisbee injury that I had. And I was playing a lot of ultimate Frisbee. It was really important to me at the time. Uh, I wanted to do a bit more stretching related to that and flossing because my dentist told me that I should floss more. And I tried doing that in the evenings, but the problem was that I would either be too tired or lazy. I would procrastinate it for some reason, or I was working from home. I started working from home at that time, and I would work into the evenings, and it just wouldn't get done. So 
mornings was the next step of, well, maybe if I try this in the mornings, I'll get it done. And that's what led me to do that. So what I talk about in the blog sometimes is that for some people, it might be the reverse. Like their morning routine might only be five or 10 minutes and their evening routine might be you know, a few hours because that's when works best for them. So I think they're both important, but it will depend on each person as to how much weight you give either one. I want to talk a little bit about the idea of morning habits and sunk costs. I've been spending time, in fact, I, I did a talk uh, at Think Better, Live Better 2018 where I talked about this idea of, you know, um, decision theory. And, you know, a lot of the stuff that comes with behavioral, like a financial theory and stuff like Kahneman and all those people talk about this. You talk about like the lesson of sunk costs applied to morning habits. So I want you to, do, can you, we're going to link to this post in, in the show notes for sure. But you were, you were actually at an all day Q&A with Seth Godin where he talks about sunk costs. How, what, what are some of the things that, that you can apply this lesson of sunk costs to when it comes to morning habits? Sure. I, I absolutely love this lesson that. Seth gave in this q and it's, it's one of the things that stuck with me the most. And it's the idea that when you make a decision, let's say you buy a ticket for a concert in the future, you're giving a gift to your future self. So today I buy a ticket for a concert. Five months from now, I'm saying I want that gift in the future. Five months from now, if another opportunity comes up, let's say you might say to me, hey, I got an extra ticket to go to this awesome event in New York City. Do you want to come with me? I said, absolutely, I want to go. All of a sudden, the gift of the concert ticket to myself is not nearly as good, pales in comparison to the gift that you're offering me. So I'm going to choose to go to New York on this, this fun trip. And what it represents is that, that constant reevaluation of what you're investing in and do you want that now? So with Morning Habits, a lot of people will, will develop morning rituals or routines and it just becomes so routine. It becomes so habit that it's a default and it no longer or it may no longer be serving the purpose of which it was intended to. Um, so you can get stuck in these habits that might not be the best habit for you at that time based on the new goals that you have or the new priorities in your life. So an example for me would be, uh, and I, I've learned to kind of get around this, is you know, I, I watch, you know, the Cincinnati Bengals play football, for example. And uh, when I watch them live on my planning day, which is Sunday, I have to be not only okay with, but just understand that what, what the costs are by spending, you know, that 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. slot because we're on the, you know, the, the West Coast, watching that at that time live Versus what if I waited? What if I didn't go onto social media or onto the sports websites or whatever? What if I just blocked myself out, continued with planning, and then watched it at what might be a more appropriate time? And what's interesting from my vantage point on that front is that there is choice there. Like, And if you do that, if I was to watch every single thing live, let's say, uh, or if I was going to binge watch a show on Netflix, for example, the, the, the understanding is that this is where our brains kind of mess with us, is that it's not like those shows are going anywhere. I talked to my son about this the other day where he he started freaking out because he couldn't watch uh, a Minecraft video and it was mm. close to his bedtime. And he said, but why? Why can't... I'm like, is the video going to be gone? And he, in his, it, 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 he all of a sudden stopped and he goes, well, yeah. I'm like, no, is it? I said... It might not be in your head right now that like you want to watch it now. So in your brain, it's going, no, I must watch it now. But it's on YouTube. It's not going anywhere. You could watch it at a more appropriate time. And right now is not the appropriate time. Whereas, you know, as we're recording this, you know, the new Jessica Jones season two is coming out tomorrow, basically, as we're recording this. And and I could sit back and binge watch all the episodes and just know that eight hours or more of my time is going to be lost at that time, or I could spread it out at more appropriate times. I don't think enough people do that. I think people get caught up in the immediacy or this, this, this false sense of fear of missing out when they're really not. They're not going to miss out at all unless unless they fall prey to you know social media as an example or news cycles where they say, "Oh, this just happened, and why didn't you watch it at this time?" I think that that's a big problem when it comes to these kind of things. Yeah, absolutely. I think a big part of that is the, the culture and the age that we live in, too, right? These 
uh, these TV shows, these technologies are designed to be addictive. That there are there's a reason why on Netflix it counts down the number of seconds until yeah. it automatically plays the next episode, and that happens actually, on YouTube. It, and it automatically plays when you like. So now when you're scrolling through the app. If you decide that you're going to on, on TV, at least if you scroll to the show and you leave it there long enough, it starts to automatically play. You can't turn that off. It just starts to play. I think that there's what's interesting is, is when I was growing up, you, you I mean, initially you had to watch it live. There was no other way around it. And then VCR VCRs came along and then VCR plus came along. Do you, I don't know if you remember VCR plus, but it was like a eight, like a like a numeric code that you would enter and it would know when to record that show so that you could be able to watch it. And then, um, you know, eventually, you know, uh, we, we managed to get this on demand culture that, but now we, we don't leverage that. And it's the same thing. It's funny. It's the same thing with time in general. You know, I mean, most people, when you talk to them, when you talk to most people, do they, do they either have a morning routine or an evening routine? And if so, do they understand that they really have one or does it just kind of, um, show up in the conversation and you say to them, you know, you do have a morning routine. You do realize that. Yeah, it, it completely depends. Everyone has a morning routine for the, for the most part. Most people wake up and do similar things or at least some of the same things. So uh, everyone pretty much has one. We all have habits. But uh, in terms of who say, would say I have a morning routine versus who would say I don't have a morning routine, uh, it definitely it definitely varies at a place like World Domination Summit, an event like that, definitely find that there are quite a few people that have morning routines. Mm-hmm. And I love hearing about them because you know they can be very, very different, um, have very different components. And you also get the people that will say, I hate mornings. Mornings are the worst. I'm slow in the morning. I don't even want to talk to you really right now because you are talking <laughs> about something you're that's me boring out. to me. <laughs> yeah. Well, but Which why? Here, I can relate yeah. to. Yeah, well, here's the interesting thing, and this you also mentioned this on your start here page. It's like, mornings allow us to create space for ourselves and hit the reset button at the start of each day. Good mornings lead to meaningful days. Meaningful days lead to a fulfilling life. Let's make every morning count. And when when I hear people that say that they their morning routine is they get up, have a cup of coffee, get the kids together, you know, they're basically going from zero to sixty, you know, in a span of, uh, you know, from as soon as their feet hit the floor. I think that that there's room there's no room for breathing and that's why like I don't hate mornings. I'm not a morning person, but I've learned that I have to craft my mornings in such a way that give me like you said that space, allow me to create that space so that I can lean into the day better. Whereas I think a lot of people uh, I'm being very general with some people, let's let's not say a lot of people. They 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 are so quote busy or so um, occupied that they don't take the they don't take a gentle enough approach to start uh, to start their day. Whether and, and in all honesty, like what if someone is struggling with that? So let's say their morning routine is literally what I just said. Hey, Craig. Yeah, I, 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 sure. I have a morning routine. It's you know I get up in the morning. I uh, the coffee's already made. I'm making breakfast for the kids, or make or I you know I've got to get to the office in a half hour, so I get a shower, dressed, head out the door, and um you know and I'm on I'm on on my way to work, I'm drinking, I grab breakfast at McDonald's or whatever, drive through. Like, what do you say to that person when they, when they say it exactly in those terms? Um, what would your advice be to someone who's, who, when they finish saying that they're like, okay, so I have a morning, but man, man, it, it, like, it's just go, go, go fast, fast, fast. Now, 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 what would you, how would someone start to be gentler about that? I have some thoughts on this too, but I'd love to hear your thoughts. Yeah. I, what I would immediately start doing is asking a series of questions to get a better understanding of like, what, what are the challenges that they're having? Like what time do they go to bed? Mm. Do they have challenges getting up out of bed. Have they been a morning person in the past? Like what, what is the barrier that's um, causing the challenges that they're, they're having or, or what are they, what would they want to change? Like what do they want to add or subtract? So I'd ask a, a series of questions, but Generally speaking, I would say to get a really clear understanding of what you actually do every every day. So thinking, what is my current routine? Even writing that down for mm-hmm. a week and tracking like, what you actually do and the time that it takes. And then 
from there, thinking about uh, what are some of the things that you want to be doing. And on my website, uh, if people go there and sign up, there is a guide it's called Love Waking Up, Five Simple Strategies to Customize Your Morning Routine. And how I crafted that was by looking at hundreds of people's morning routines and trying to find like what are the common connections, what are the commonalities of people and how they choose their morning rituals. Um, one of them, one of the strategies in there, which I know that you talk a lot about, Mike, is uh, related to planning, to planning your day. And for me, one of the biggest game changers in terms of having mornings that are more calm and mindful where I'm not thinking about, oh my God, I need to do this today and this is happening and I'm stressed about this, is planning my day the day before. And do, I do that at the end of my work day. It's like the last thing that I do. And uh, I plan my day in, in blocks. But regardless of how I do it, I've already thought about everything that I need to do for that day. And when I wake up, I don't think at all about what I need to be doing. It's really not a thought that crosses my mind anymore. I will have ideas about, you know, oh, I want to maybe write this post or, oh, I have this idea for something through my job. Like I get ideas of, related to work. I don't necessarily not think about work ever, but I'm never thinking, oh, no, I need to get this done. Oh, no, I'm going to forget that. It's completely taken out that sort of worry and decision making. And uh, that's what I would, would, would really focus on is like what, what are the stresses that are causing too much thinking in the morning that are causing them to, to rush and, and not do things differently than how they're doing them. Do you think that people, um, and I definitely want to touch on this a little bit more too, is do you think that people, when they're, when they're in this state, they, you know, they, they struggle with this idea of, okay, I'm going to build a morning routine and they go from much, like I said, they go from zero to 60 when they get out of bed. Now they're like, okay, I need a morning routine. And they try to do too much. You know, they try yes. to say, okay, I'm going to completely overhaul it. Um, in my in my experience, that just leads to failure. And, of course, you tend to throw the baby out with the bathwater in that situation. You're saying, well, clearly morning routines don't work. I mean, I, I would say, and I want to touch on your, I mean, you did do a lot of research on morning routines. There's 127 of them, in fact. We're going to, we're going to touch on that in a minute here uh, once we get back from the break. But I think the other thing is, like, start small, right? Like, add... You know, if you if you if you already have a morning routine or even an evening routine, like start with three things and just build out from there. Get them sticky, and then that way you've you've built them and go from there. But I want to talk about these 127 morning routines, this massive mega post. But we'll we'll do that because uh, I want to definitely find out what maybe some of your surprising things were, what what the you know maybe the most unique morning routine were, maybe some of the the. Maybe maybe a morning routine didn't happen in the morning at all. We'll get to that uh, just as soon as we come back from the break. Okay, we're back. Craig, you you did a lot of research. In fact, I would say that this is the ultimate guide, the ultimate list to customize your morning routine. So what, 127, like how did you assemble this, number one? Because it's a 46-minute read, but it, of course it's a BS skimmer and it's kind of like reading, you know, Tim Ferriss' Tribe of Mentors or Tools of Titans. It's not something that you're necessarily supposed to go in and, and read from, you know, point one all the way to point 127 can you talk about uh what were some of your findings first off assembling this this mega post uh, this ultimate list and then maybe some of the findings that surprised you sure well i started assembling this almost a year ago and it's been an off and on post that i've been working on uh the way that i did it was by starting off with things that i've done and tried and then i would read other people's morning routines. There's definitely a lot of information about morning routines online and what uh, quote unquote successful people do or what other people do. So I read through hundreds of them and would write down things that I had not <clears throat> heard of or thought of or tried <clears throat> and added them into the post. And then I did research on each one to find out, okay, well, what are good places to start if you want to do this ritual? Or what does science say about this ritual? And that's definitely not my, my strong suit is science background, but I did the research and put the information in there so that people could link through or click through the link to decide uh, if this is something that they want to consider adding to their, their morning routine. To answer your question on some of the things that surprised me, was that your question? 
Yeah, absolutely. Some of the things that kind of threw you out, threw you, not, not for a loop, but just kind of like, whoa, that's interesting. Like maybe, you know, um, some particular thing that someone does during the morning or maybe like as late as someone's morning. Because like, my morning routine starts at, you know, probably around eight o'clock, which is not the latest. I'm sure there's other people out there who have much, you know, have later times that they start their morning routine. Well, it doesn't matter when you start. I mean, you can start at eight or exactly. nine or ten, and you you just go from there. It really has no difference. The only difference might be if you have um, other distractions. Like if you're up super early in the morning and no one's up, then you might have a quiet time in the house, and that could help with certain rituals. But other than that, I, I really don't think it matters about the time that you start. Um, some of the ones that were interesting or surprising to me. Uh, one of the things that I started doing after reading it, this was scraping my tongue. I don't know if you know about this or heard about this. Yeah, it's isn't so it the thing that it. helps? It helps with your breath or something like that, right? Yeah, helps with bad breath. And uh, as much as I hate to admit, I can get bad breath. It was effective or has been effective most of the time. So that's one that I implemented from doing this. I tried intermittent fasting, not eating breakfast in the morning. That didn't go very well for me because I just felt sick a lot of the time. I mm-hmm. couldn't get past that one. Um, do you know about the the Wim Hof method? I've uh, re- I've heard it, but uh, I'm drawing a bit of a blank. So re- re- kind of refresh my memory as well as what my audience my audience may not have no idea what that is. Okay, it was, oh, there's a guy named Wim Hof who developed this method, and it's uh, I haven't actually done it because it frightens me a little bit. But the people who have done it say it's amazing. And so what it is is as soon as you wake up, you sit in a meditation meditation posture. You do 30 power breaths where you inhale through your mouth or nose, and then you exhale through the, the mouth in these short bursts, kind of like blowing up a balloon. You hold your breath until you gasp, and then you take a deep breath and hold in for 10 seconds, and you repeat this six more rounds. So the, the problem and the reason I haven't done this yet is because you can sometimes make yourself pass out if you... If you you know, work too hard and do this. And then after all this, you take a cold shower. Uh, and it wow. sounds like a, a recipe for, for torture, but there's a lot of uh, research that Wim Hof has done and people anecdotally will say that they have so much more energy and focus. Uh, it's used for sports performance, better sleep, and reduced stress. Uh, so I know Tim Ferriss has interviewed uh, Wim Hof and has talked about the method in more detail there. So that's one that I haven't yet tried, but kind of surprised me when I was learning. So there's lots. Of, I encourage you to go check out this post because it's great. And the uh, there's and there is a lot there. And I know you're going to be spreading out this a little bit more. Probably by the time you're listening to this, this this these routines and these rituals are going to be all over the place. But the other the other place that we ran into as we get close to wrapping up here is the tribe conference. And it was another great conference held by my friend Jeff Goins. And you, I want to, I don't really write about, I don't really write about po- like these kind of things anymore when they're a little less timely uh, because, uh, I, you know, the blog, I want to keep as evergreen as possible. I normally talk about these things on my, you know, my pot, either, either on this show, although I try to keep this evergreen or the daily podcast, the th- three minutes uh, uh, of time crafting with Mike Vardy, which you can subscribe to. And I'll put a link to that in the show notes as well. Um, how did tribe conference change your life? Cause you wrote about it, how it can, did it change your life? And if so, how can it? Yeah, I mean, definitely it, it shifted my perspective on some things that I think will ultimately shape or shift the course of the direction that I'm heading. Uh, for me, uh, I found it really helpful to have conversations with other people who are at different stages of starting a business, mostly writing related businesses and the connection to some of the speakers. I know that you had the premium ticket, Mike, and Mm -hmm. having access to that space in the back where you could have conversations with uh, people like Leo Babauta or Ryan Holiday that were there. And Mm -hmm. I think, yeah, you were at my table when we did a mastermind for my blog with uh, Leo Babauta. It was Sean McCabe, Sean Blanc, like, it was a powerhouse table, that's for sure. <laughs> yeah. So that having that, that that access and that connection to people who um, have a lot of experience was super helpful. And then for me, when I 
left the conference and was on my way home, I just started getting all of these ideas coming to me. It was like flooding out of my head. It was like popcorn, just pop, 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 pop. And wrote you know, them all down. I think the next night I slept like one hour because ideas were just flooding into my head. And once I let the dust settle and uh, looked at the ideas later, they weren't all great ideas. I can tell you that. <laughs> Middle of the night ideas. They, are, they uh, never, they like generally, Thursday. yeah, not all of them can be gold. <laughs> no, but there were definitely a few in there that, that, that shaped and shifted um, to the direction that uh, I'm heading. So I found it extremely fruitful and I got excited when the tickets went on sale. I bought an extra ticket to give away to someone else because I wanted to see what could happen if I, if I did that for someone else. And generosity has been a theme of the past uh, year, wanting to just do more, give more. And I thought this would be a fun way to do it. So I'm giving away a premium ticket to the 2018 conference, which is uh, late October in Nashville on yep. the blog. And uh, I guess you'll link that to that in the show notes of how Absolutely. people get to that. Absolutely. I'm also going to link that you give away monthly books, uh, but you, not just monthly books, but you <laughs> do monthly book giveaways. Uh, these books will last longer than a month. They don't expire within a month. Um, <laughs> Hopefully so, not. <laughs> so I'm going to put that in the show notes as well. But one of the things that, that you know, as we, you know, as, as we're, we're wrapping up here, I think that, you know, I mean, the tribe conference, I think going to conferences is a big deal. You know, I think that that, that time getting that time out there. And, and the great thing about routines and rituals is I find that if they're simple and they're flexible and they're durable, they can stand the, 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 you know, the, the weathering uh, and, and maybe the, the, um, shall we say the uh, kind of the, 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 the uncertainty of travel, you know, like when I travel, I can still do pretty much. And I'm not going to say a hundred percent because it's not like I bring my neutral bullet with me everywhere I go. But and maybe I'm not doing my AeroPress coffee first thing in the morning, but I'm certainly having a coffee in the morning and I'm certainly writing in my journal in the evening because the journal goes with me wherever I go. Like, so, you know, if you want, I think it actually I'd be curious when you were when you go to conferences like WDS and you, your routines go with you, don't they? And you've built them in a way that allows you to make them portable uh, and potent at the same time. This is a great question. Yeah, I I. I definitely have different routines or rituals for when I'm traveling, but I still like to keep them going. And the way that I like to refer to this or think about this is in terms of an accordion. So when I'm home and I have lots of time, the accordion is fully stretched and I have these morning rhythms and routines um, that I do. When I travel, it's, it's compressing that accordion. And it could be other interruptions in, in my morning routine that could cause this too. If someone's visiting or if I out late the night before or I wake up later than I usually do, I will shorten the amount of time that I do certain rituals or might skip certain ones. And when I'm really busy, when it's like a travel day or even like WDS, uh, several mornings, I, I didn't have a ton of time. I have these three unwavering rituals that I'll make sure that I do no matter what. And I make them so simple that I pretty much can't forget to do them. And one of them is stretching, which could literally be touching my toes or just raising my arms in the air. The second is meditation, which can be uh, 10 to 15 seconds of just being mindful, as opposed to usually I'll spend 20 minutes in the morning meditating. And the third one is gratitude. I'll, I have a, a Word doc that I'll normally write my gratitude in every day, but if I'm traveling, I'll just think of something I'm, I'm grateful for. And I found this really helpful for traveling because one of the biggest challenges with habits is when you get out of habits, it's so much harder to get back into habits and restart that. So by having these, making them so small and so easy that I can do them no matter what has helped me to keep that consistency and not feel bad about the fact that uh, I didn't do the habits that day. Greg, this has been a, a great conversation and uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing you again. I'm not going to the World Domination Summit this year, as it stands. Uh, and there's just there's just so many different conferences that you can go to. But uh, totally. I will. I will. My plan is to be at Tribe. So if I don't see you in Vancouver, which is where you are, which is just across the water from me, I will see you uh, at one of those conferences. Where can people uh, find you? Uh, 
Uh, I've got all the links in the show notes, but on like, you know, obviously go to creategoodmornings.com. Go to the start here page because I've got that uh, link to the show notes. But where can people find you on social if they want to connect with you personally? Twitter is the best place right now. Twitter at Craig Glick, C-R-A-I-G-K-U-L-Y-K. Awesome. Thanks so much for joining me today, Craig. Thanks, Mike. I had a great time. Thanks for taking the time to listen to that conversation. And thank you to Craig for being a friend. Really appreciate it. And uh, I hope that um, you got a lot out of this conversation. Anything that you take from this conversation, I think would be great. Great. Craig was a a great guy. And he is uh, on my mind, obviously, right now. And uh, he had an impact on me. And I hope this conversation uh, will help you in some way, shape, or form. Uh, If you want to get more from the conversation beyond what we talked about, go to productivities.com slash podcast 428. And if you don't want to miss any upcoming episodes, make sure you subscribe to the podcast. We've got uh, great episodes coming down the pipeline. And if you want to support the show beyond subscribing, go to productivities.com slash podcast sponsors and you can hear, you can, you can support some of the podcast uh, sponsors that you heard during our conversation today, as well as those that have sponsored the show for some time. Uh, That's it for this episode. Thanks again for taking the time to listen to it. And until next time, I'm Mike Vardy, the host of A Productive Conversation, reminding you to stop doing productive and start being productive. See you later.